Hey people, welcome to The Run Test, it's Kieran here. I am in Italy, that behind me is Lake Garda. I came here to visit the Wynn HQ. If you don't know Wynn, they're a brand that make really high-tech sports apparel, all kinds of base layers, running gear, skiing gear, all sorts of things. So we yesterday went and had a look around their factory, at their labs, and now whilst I'm here, I've got the chance to go and do something a bit special. I'm gonna be taking the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and putting it to a really thorough ultra test by trying to run 100 miles around Lake Garda in three days. We're gonna see how the Apple Watch Ultra 2 battery life holds up in various different modes. We're gonna see if how it can cope over those three days. And at the same time, we're gonna go and try and do a loop of that. I've also got the Garmin Forerunner 965 on my wrist to do some comparisons of things like the GPS accuracy, the heart rate stats, all of that stuff I'll be doing as well as taking in what hope is going to be some wonderful views. I'm going to also find out if my legs can make it. Let's go and have a crack. Now we've got a full Apple Watch Ultra 2 review on the channel, so be sure to check that out for a deeper look at what's new. But in a nutshell, here's what it is. There's no real running upgrades here. The improvements focus largely on the general watch experience. That means brighter screen, more powerful processor, and those cleverer controls. You get the dual frequency precision multi-band GNSS using the L1 and L5 bands to boost the distance and real-time pace tracking accuracy. And crucially for endurance hundred runners, that brighter screen and faster processing won't cost battery life. That's what Apple says anyway. However, the battery life remains unchanged. You get 12 hours GPS in normal power mode, and that extends to 17 hours with low power mode enabled and up to 35 hours in low power mode with additional things like heart rate and GPS frequency dialed right down. Now to test the Apple Watch Ultra's Ultra credentials, I ran 100 miles around Lake Garda in three days covering approximately 50 kilometers a day with around six to seven hours of GPS runtime each day. Now each day I tested a different power and accuracy mode and compared it to the Garmin Forerunner 965 and the Garmin HRM Pro Plus chest strap. Every day I took the watch soft charge at 100% in the morning when I left my accommodation. I tracked the runtime battery burn. I looked at the burn rate when I wasn't running as well before I put it back on charge. And I clocked the GPS and heart rate accuracy as well as looking at what it was like for generally use in an ultra running adventure like this. So the Apple Watch Ultra and the Ultra 2 finally put an end to battery anxiety for most runners. There's enough single stint juice to handle marathon race day and still be alive the morning after. It can now stretch to three days without having to stick it on charge while training for roughly an hour a day. It also doesn't leach too much battery life when you're not running. I kept my usage to a bare minimum when I wasn't running the lake and it averaged around 1% per hour burn. The exception here is overnight. I charged my Apple Watch Ultra during the night during this test, but in other tests, I found the overnight battery burn averaged around 10%. Now that's quite a lot, and it definitely limits the Ultra 2's multi-day Ultra potential. For example, this wouldn't last the Marathon de Saab six or seven days on a single charge. You would need to have a way of charging it out there. Now, when it comes to runtime endurance, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 couldn't quite match the Garmin 4 Runner 965, but it put in a really strong performance in all three power modes. Based on my Garda tests in its lowest power, lowest accuracy mode, I'd estimate you'll get close to 45 hours runtime. The 4965 offers a slightly longer 55 hours estimate, but the Ultra 2 staying power in that mode definitely makes it a 100 mile and a 100 kilometer ultra potential device. Anything where you'll be moving between 12 and 30 hours. Now in the 17 hour low power mode with regular heart rate and GPS readings, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 might well stretch to 24 hours runtime, that's plenty for 100 kilometer ultras, including getting to the start, running the race, and still having a bit of juice left to use Apple Pay for the, to buy that kind of celebratory beer or hail an Uber after. It's also enough for the speedy ultra runners to cover 100 miles. Finally, running for seven and a half hours on day three in this test in the highest accuracy 12 hour mode, the Apple Watch Ultra burned about 37%. That suggests you can expect significantly more than Apple's listed runtime of 12 hours, which is a pretty good performance. It might even stretch up to 20 hours, and again, that'll cover most runners for a 100 kilometer ultra. When it comes to heart rate, heart rate isn't necessarily the most important metric when you're running ultras, but the Apple Watch Ultra 2's optical sensor provided plenty accurate enough tracking for the demands 
of ultra. Now, regardless of the power mode, the average heart rate readings were within two beats on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 Optical, the Garmin Forerunner 965 Optical, and the Garmin HRM Pro chest strap. So they were very, very closely matched. However, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 did have a tendency at times to read a higher heart rate max in those sessions. Not often, but there were spikes, sometimes a good seven to 12 beats above the chest strap. Surprisingly, these high max readings happened in the most accurate 12 hour mode and 35 hour power save mode where the Apple Watch Ultra takes less frequent heart rate reads. Make of that what you will, but for Ultras, I think the accuracy here is plenty strong enough. So on GPS, this one's quite straightforward. The Apple Watch Ultra 2's multi-band was excellent across all the power modes and it matched the Garmin Forerunner 965 and the much pricier Enduro 2 on overall distance and pacing, even in those lower frequency power saving modes. Now, when you dig into the GPS tracks, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 was quite noticeably better actually at locking onto the paths and roads than even the Forerunner 965 as well. Real-time pacing, anecdotally, when I was looking down was also well-matched Nicely responsive, not that I was moving particularly fast though or doing much of a change. And from a GPS perspective, I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2 has all the power you need for tackling Ultra, even in the lowest GPS settings. And that's definitely a win here. Now, when it comes to the verdict for single day Ultras, even up to the 100 mile distance, where you're not relying too much on the need to navigate, I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is a genuine contender. If you have access to charging on those ultras, it's also got multi-day ultra potential as well. You can rely on it to handle all the running basics. GPS, heart rate accuracy is spot on. The battery life will stretch and the screen is excellent in all lights. And then when it really kind of think about it, when you throw in all the extra smartwatch extras, the Ultra 2 is a far more rounded tool than any of its rivals. The ability to take calls and messages, play music, pay for that emergency water or ice cream mid-run, really elevates its practicality on some ultras outside of races particularly, not to mention the torch, the siren, the safety, and that last emergency call waypoint that takes you back to where you last had connection if you need to, and being able to hail an Uber if things go terribly wrong. You can do all of this from the watch. These are all useful as I plotted around Lake Garda's towns. Now the big gap for me though is the navigation. You can piece together a Garmin-like experience using third-party apps, but it's somewhat disjointed, and Garmin's devices cater much more effectively for the navigational needs of ultra adventures outside of races particularly. So despite the Apple Watch Ultra 2's stronger capabilities, I wouldn't have been able to leave my phone at home and run my Garda loop using only the watch, I don't think. And this is perhaps where I find the Apple Watch most frustrating. It's the most frustrating thing about the Ultra 2. I think it has all the makings of a complete ultra running tool, but it's not quite there yet. So what do I mean by that? Well, what Apple has done here, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is by far the best running smartwatch. It probably isn't the best running watch, and there are many things that you'll find on a Garmin that are really kind of tailored very heavily towards runners. It feels like they've thought about runner specific needs and they've gone all out. The Apple Watch Ultra has some of that, but it just doesn't go quite far enough. And particularly if you're an ultra runner where your needs are slightly different, the sort of general running approach that Apple takes here, it just hasn't quite been ticked off with the Apple Watch Ultra. It could so easily be, but obviously Apple thinking, you know, they obviously go more general. They like to make their products appeal more broadly. They're not that worried about targeting what is potentially a sort of specific niche. And so it just falls short. Still a great smart running watch, but not the best ultra watch out there. So there you have it. That was my ultra run test of the Apple Watch Ultra 2. I hope you enjoyed it and found it enlightening. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell for more great run testers videos when they land. If you want a multi-tester deep dive into the Apple Watch Ultra 2, if you're thinking of buying that perhaps, that's appearing somewhere on the channel just about now.